Biden endorses a new bill to support unions. Will this help American workers or hurt them? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect yourself whenever you go online. So, there's a new bill in Congress that would radically change what types of jobs you're allowed to have. It's widely supported by unions as a way to protect workers. But for millions of non-union employees and freelancers, it could end their careers faster than saying something mildly offensive on Twitter. Last month, the House of Representatives passed the Protecting the Right to Organize Act, or the PRO Act. It has President Biden's support. I have long said America wasn't built by Wall Street. It was built by the middle class, and unions built the middle class. Unions put power in the hands of workers. They level the playing field. They give you a stronger voice for your health, your safety, higher wages, protection from racial discrimination and sexual harassment. Unions lift up workers, both union and non-union, and especially black and brown workers. Biden has promised to be the most pro-union president you've ever seen. And the PRO Act is a big part of that. The PRO Act amends the National Labor Relations Act. That's the federal law that governs the collective bargaining relationship between companies and unions. But the law has its critics, like the left-leaning Economic Policy Institute, which supports the PRO Act. It says the National Labor Relations Act has weaknesses that can easily be exploited by anti-union employers and the union-busting consultants they hire. The PRO Act tries to fix that by making it easier for the government to fine companies for interfering with unions. Unfortunately, this law is limited to America, so the elf unions at the North Pole still have to struggle against the tyranny of Santa Claus. He knows when they are sleeping, on the job. The PRO Act also overturns the right to work laws in 28 states. Right to work laws allow anyone to work for any company that will hire them. The laws prevent unions from requiring that all workers join the union in order to get a job. Now that gives workers more freedom, but it also creates what's called a free rider problem. Unions still have to represent everyone, even if some of those workers don't pay membership dues. And that hurts unions and makes them less effective at representing workers. Right-to-work laws also allow companies to hire workers that unions don't think are qualified, like workers who don't meet certain skill requirements. But remember, if it weren't for untalented people getting work, we never would have heard about Keanu Reeves. And that would be a crime. What Keanu lacks in acting ability, he makes up for with pure, unbridled Keanu-ness. But the PRO Act would do away with right-to-work laws. So all employees at unionized companies will have to pay union dues, even if they don't want to. Did I mention unions like the PRO Act? The PRO Act also requires companies to reclassify most freelance workers as employees. The theory is that a lot of companies take advantage of workers by labeling them as freelancers, so they don't have to give them benefits. Companies like Uber, which we all hate. Unless you love receiving mixtapes from amateur DJs, then Uber is just swell. But some think the PRO Act actually hurts workers. I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. There's a lot of pushback against the PRO Act, especially when it comes to how it defines freelance workers and independent contractors. That's determined by what's called the ABC test. The ABC test was created in the 1930s to do things like improve factory conditions for workers. Yeah, it's a bit antiquated. Factories no longer look like this. They look like this. <laughs> no, that's so 2019. A lot of factories today look like this. And yes, there are still physical factories, 
but only until they all become like this. Andrew Yang tried to warn us. And that's part of the problem. The type of work people do has changed a lot since the 1930s. The ABC test is a way to figure out if a worker is an employee or an independent contractor. The idea was to stop employers from misclassifying employees as independent contractors, just to save on employment costs. Things like payroll taxes, health insurance, paid leave, and stolen office supplies. Which reminds me, I'm out of staplers. The ABC test starts by assuming everyone's an employee and not an independent contractor, unless A. The worker is not under the business's control. B. The worker is not doing a job that is part of the main business of the employer. And C. The worker has other clients that they do the same work for. You have to meet all three to be an independent contractor. So for example, if a newspaper hired a plumber, he would be an independent contractor. But if the newspaper hired a freelance writer, he would have to be an employee, because writing is part of the main business of a newspaper. California already put the ABC test into law last year by considering gig workers employees. Biden praised California for it during his 2020 campaign. He also praised California for its raisins, saying, if you don't vote for me, you ain't purple. That reference is so old, it's actually plausible Joe Biden said it. During Biden's campaign, he promised to work with Congress to establish a federal standard model on the ABC test. And with the PRO Act, Biden is trying to make good on that promise, unlike his promise for a $2,000 stimulus check. This is why I have to steal office supplies. But a lot of freelance workers are worried. They fear that the pro-union bill could kill their careers. Supporters, however, argue that the PRO Act will not destroy the gig economy. This does not mean independent contractors and freelancers would no longer exist. The PRO Act would just prevent employers from unfairly trying to misclassify workers, keeping them from having a collective voice. House Education and Labor Committee Chair Bobby Scott says that anyone who claims that the bill would mean the end of freelancing or restrict workers' flexibility is either mistaken or deliberately misrepresenting the facts. Yeah, what makes gig economy workers think that the ABC test would kill their careers or restrict their rights? What's that, Shelley? Oh, because the ABC test in California has done exactly that. I'll explain how after the break. Welcome back. Last year, California enacted a law called AB5. It reclassified workers as employees based on the ABC test. And a lot of people in California lost their freelance work after. From translators, to musicians, to actors, to the guy that rubs baby oil on the rock before taking his Instagram pictures. Left-leaning Vox Media praised California's AB5 law when it was passed, calling it a victory for workers everywhere. And then, Vox cut hundreds of their writers because they didn't actually want to hire those freelance writers as full-time employees. So it was a victory for workers everywhere. Unless you were working for Vox. The fallout from AB5 got so bad that California lawmakers decided they had to fix it. Not by repealing AB5, no, but by passing even more laws. Their logic was essentially, how are we going to get out of here? We'll dig our way out. No, no, dig up, stupid. First, they passed AB 2257. It made certain independent contractors exempt from the law, allowing writers and many others to freelance again. And then, voters passed Prop 22, which allowed Uber and Lyft to continue to treat drivers as independent contractors, which was bad for the full-time drivers who wanted to be treated as employees, with paid vacation and so on. But it was good for part-time drivers who were able to keep driving to make extra cash on the side, until their DJ career takes off. Any day now. Even with all the changes, a lot of freelancers aren't able to take advantage of the exemptions, 
So a lot of people still find AB5 rotten to the core and say it should end completely. The problem with the ABC test is the B part. See, freelance writers, musicians, actors, and others fail the B part because they perform a service in the usual course of the business that hired them, not outside of it. Think of the freelance writer at a newspaper. That's why the B part of the test is impossible to satisfy. This makes employees so afraid of violating the B part that they simply stop hiring freelancers altogether, leaving the freelancers shouting, Son of a B! That's what Fox Media did. Except after firing hundreds of freelance writers in California, Fox just hired new freelancers in other states where the AB5 law didn't apply. Ah. So it really was a victory for workers everywhere outside of California. Hearst is one of the largest magazine publishers in the world. It told writers in states with the ABC test that they couldn't contribute to their publications anymore which was bittersweet for a lot of freelancers, knowing their work was rejected because of a law instead of the usual reason. Their writing was trash. But if the PRO Act passes, that's nationwide. So what are these media companies going to do? If they can't hire American freelancers, they're going to have to find writers in India, or even worse, Canada. Of course, for freelancers who are already working a 9 to 5 type schedule, the PRO Act would be helpful. It would force companies to treat them as employees and give them benefits. But what about stay-at-home parents who only want part-time work while their kids are at school? What about full-time workers who do extra freelancing on the side to supplement their income? And what about the guy who rubs baby oil on The Rock? And like The Rock, the PRO Act could affect women especially hard. Research by the IRS shows that women account for approximately 55% of the total increase in the number of independent contractors from 2001 to 2016. That's why the PRO Act has been called an attack on female independent contractors by the Libertarian Pacific Legal Foundation, a menace to liberty by the Libertarian Cato Institute, and hilarious since it doesn't affect me by that scoundrel Santa Claus. And a lot of conservatives don't like the PRO Act either. Ultimately, this is about freedom. The freedom to engage in the economy as independent contractors. It's about empowerment, about fostering the entrepreneurial spirit our nation was built upon. The PRO Act ABC test would impose a one-size-fits-all mandate that takes this choice away from millions of Americans. It's a bad deal for workers, it's a bad deal for families, and it's a bad deal for the future of innovation and opportunity in this country. But it's a great deal for the robots that will replace these independent contractors. And a great deal for Uber riders, since robot DJs have way sicker beats. A big problem with the PRO Act is how the American workforce has changed in the last few decades. According to Upwork, 59 million Americans, that's 36% of our total workforce, are freelancing. And the Bureau of Labor says that 79% of independent contractors prefer to retain their independent status over being employees. Only around 10% of wage and salary workers belong to unions in 2020. So the PRO Act would help people who currently do this type of work as freelancers, but want their company to hire them as full-time employees. But it will present a big challenge for Americans who do this type of work and want the freedom to do it in their own way. Huh. Who would have thought that Americans would value independence besides, you know, everybody? Ultimately, it may be an ideological issue. If you believe people should have the freedom to choose who to work for and what hours to work and the freedom to quit gigs when they're not treated right, then the solution is less regulation, not more. But if you believe companies will generally mistreat workers unless they're stopped, then the solution is to give unions more power to negotiate on behalf of workers and require more workers to join unions. Did I mention unions like the PRO Act? In fact, they're warning Democrats to pass the PRO Act or else lose union support in the upcoming midterm elections. Well, that is good news. 
This isn't some ideological battle of freedom versus government regulation. It's just politics as usual. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that lets you protect your identity when you go online. It helps you hide your IP address and can keep the government from tracking your internet activity. With Surfshark's camouflage mode, even your internet provider can't tell that you're using a VPN. That helps you stay private. Plus, Surfshark's clean web mode lets you browse the internet free from ads, trackers, and malware. So stay safe by using Surfshark. Try it out with our special deal that includes 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free. Go to Surfshark.com uncovered. For just $2.21 a month, you can get Surfshark on all your devices. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.